Well, welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm so excited for you to join us once again today. Uh, addressing your fundraising questions is always important to me. I just, there are so many of you out there who have given me good feedback about this question and answer session. And uh, you've got questions that you've given to me and I appreciate that so much. I just uh, really like being a service, answering questions, being able to uh, help with uh, any of those kinds of things. I feel like I've been able to, uh, in so many ways, been been blessed with a lot of experience uh, and, and been given a lot of life lessons and uh, learned, uh, unfortunately, through a lot of trial and error, made a lot of mistakes over the years and uh, learned from those. And I'd like for you to maybe uh, not have to make as many or the same mistakes that I made. And if there's a way for me to be able to help you not have to make those mistakes. I'm glad to do it. Um, as always, if you have some questions, have some comments, please go down to the comments section below and put those in there. If you've got questions, uh, go out on Twitter. Uh, you can reach me at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. You can certainly always reach out to me via email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com and uh, as always would love to have you as part of this community so if you are not a subscriber already uh, please I'd, uh, I'd just suggest that you subscribe and join us as a community to help to take our income goals to the next level and get fully funded so let's dive right into our first set of questions for this week our first question today is from Tim in Des Moines, Iowa. And Tim asks, our board is pushing for a big name speaker for our annual dinner. We've never wanted to spend the money. What cautions would you have for me? Well, Tim, thanks so much for your question. I'll tell you, I have, uh, I've really had my fair share of problems and mistakes and errors uh, in this case over the years. And I have learned so many lessons in 2,500 dinners. Uh, one of those lessons is that uh, a big name speaker uh, can give you more headaches and more hardship uh, than you ever imagined. And uh, I Early on, uh, I jumped on the bandwagon with a lot of others who said, well, of course, you know, how do I grow my dinner? Or how do I make my dinner popular? How do I make my dinner one that everybody wants to go to? Of course, that means a big name speaker. Well, big name speakers lead to big name fees and a lot of expenses related to that. I remember one speaker who uh, was, was uh, going to speak to our staff beforehand in the afternoon and also speak at the dinner at night. Well, what that meant was that even that brief time speaking to our staff, that speaker wanted a fee for speaking then, the same fee for speaking at night, and they wanted us to pay first class plane tickets for the trip in the morning and even though they weren't leaving anywhere they wanted a second first class ticket because they were speaking a second time and the tickets were associated with speaking go figure uh, and so there are really are a lot of fees related to that but let's put the fees aside for a minute and let's talk about what we want to accomplish with our event. Well, certainly every event wants to grow, and that's important, and, and growing dinners is important. Uh, and in theory, um, you're a big name speaker will grow your dinner. You will have more people who will come to your dinner to hear that speaker. Unfortunately, what tends to happen is that people will come to hear the speaker and are not that interested in your organization or what you do. And if you um, really uh, subscribe to the model that I teach with our dinner where you provide a complimentary meal to people believing that their generosity on the back end will be greater than their generosity in purchasing a ticket or a table, that can lead to a disaster. Uh, I have had countless dinners where I've jumped from 250 to 500 by having a big name speaker. Well, unfortunately, my costs increased with that big name speaker. And unfortunately, what happened was my attendance increased 
but my giving didn't increase proportionately or increase at all. One example that I had and I've used over the years countlessly is that after a number of successful dinners, I was talked into a, by a board to have a big name speaker for an event that I was doing in the Washington DC area. We were traditionally getting about 250 people to that dinner. And that was fine. And we were probably bringing in about $104,000 every year from those 250 people. And that was, it was a solid income strategy. We were talked into getting a big name speaker. And I reluctantly decided I'm going to go ahead and go with it. And that big name speaker did increase attendance to 500 people. So a 50% a increase in number of attendance was great. I enjoyed walking around the um, reception time. I met two gentlemen who saw that the big name speaker was gonna be speaking at the event, flew in a private plane from Indianapolis to Washington DC just to hear that speaker speak. And I thought, wow, I have got to get their names. Private plane, wrote it after I walked away, wrote it on, on the back of their business card um, and, and said, you know, private plane men. And uh, I thought, I've got to find out how much they give at the end of the night. Well, fast forward to the end of the evening. What ended up happening was that we ended up raising about $108,000. That's $4,000 more than we raised the year before in gross income. But in net, we paid a hefty speaker fee and we paid for 250 extra meals. What we found was that we got few actual new donors that night. So our net actually was less. We grossed more money, but our net income was actually less with that big name speaker. And I can't tell you how often that happens. Now, what about those two gentlemen? Well, when I looked and uh, went to find out how much they gave, do you want to take a guess? Put down in the comment section how much you think they, they gave. Combined, the two men gave zero, zero dollars did they give that night. Uh, I chalked it up to maybe they spent all their money on fuel for that uh, private plane, but it was disappointing to say the least, and uh, I learned a valuable lesson with that. And time and time again, I've seen that uh, where organizations are talked into by board, by donors, uh, into a big name speaker. And even though it looks good uh, the, as a whole, their numbers are up, I would rather have 250 people who love us, care about us, and would do anything for us than 500 people who could care less. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really just amazing how uh, that can happen too often. So I would say don't fall into the trap. If you have to have a big name speaker, maybe think about an alternative event that might be where that individual, you rent a, um, a performing arts hall or a, uh, some type of theater or a, um, you know, a ballroom on campus and have that person actually do a lecture and a speaker and sell tickets for that. That might be a nice alternative where you get the net proceeds from ticket sales and not have to worry about the cost of a meal. But to me, unfortunately, that is what I refer to as a fundraising event, not a development event. I see a development event as being one where we are developing long-term relationships with people and not just trying to get money in the door. Um, is it wrong to just try and get money in the door? No, not at all. But remember, I would rather have someone teach me how to fish than just give me a fish. What happens sometimes is that fundraising gives you money for today, but doesn't give you money for the long haul. Building relationships, development, builds it for the long haul. So, um, Tim, I hope that helped answer your question. Uh, I sympathize with your challenge, and uh, I hope your board um, will listen to this and will also make the right decision in that regard, our organization as much as we do. But I just think um, they're not quite looking at the total picture, and uh, I believe that we need to do that. So anyway, that ends our broadcast for today. Once again, um, leave some comments in the comment section. If uh, you agreed with what I said, please put those down there. If you didn't, that's fine too. You know, people can, uh, I, I, that's all right to disagree. You may be a financial person that said the bottom line is the bottom line, and that's okay. So uh, I just, um, I appreciate you all very much. So uh, also,
also make sure that if you need, uh, if you've got questions, go out to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And uh, if you need to reach me, do so at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And uh, please subscribe and join our network of individuals trying to help you take your income to the next level. And as I say, as I always say, uh, we are here to help you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.